Yeah, so as the lead researcher, um, pretty much of heart coherence in general, uh, our group is about to go into the heart for 30 days. What motivation can you give them on why this? I'll, I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll hit one of the studies we did. It, it, it ties into what we were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, a little quick background here. We did a study a bunch of years ago now where we put recorders. I kind of actually have one laying over here that look like this. Um, and these these are high resolution heart rate variability recorders or heart rhythm. You know, you wear put it, they have electrodes and you stick them under your shirt on your chest and you wear them. They're very light. I mean, like like an ounce or less. And you kind of forget you've got them on. So we have uh, these are for ambulatory re recordings. In other words, you're going about your normal day, day and night. So we had a group of people that wore these continuously for 30 days. Hmm. Now, this particular group in this original study were all in, in California. However, some were in the southern part of the state. I mean, literally, Palm Springs and L.A. Some were here in central California where we are. Some in the northern part of the state. And it's kind of important to give this context. A lot of them didn't even know each other. right? So just going about our normal lives for 30 days while wearing these recorders. Now, the reason we did that, the, the original purpose was to, to, to examine how the rhythms in our nervous system, our autonomic nervous system and so on, were maybe being influenced by the geomagnetic and solar weather and fields and these kind of things. And they were a lot. It's all published now. But we had a big surprise that uh, when we time synchronized all the data from all these participants, the heart, heart rate variability data, and just averaged it together, right, which is a signal averaging approach, we expected to see a kind of a noisy flat line, nothing there. It's not what we found. What this showed was that the, these, these lower frequency rhythms in the heart rhythms of the, this group were synchronized. Wow. Like, now, wait a minute. Nice. Why in the world? Let's go. Why in the world would the beat to beat changes in my heart rate have anything to do with somebody 500 miles away that I don't probably don't even know? let alone, and it's not like they're sitting in a room together, you know, for 30 days meditating or something. So what we, uh, the true story is it took us about a week to, for the penny to drop. And it's kind of embarrassing because it's one of our very own hypotheses that predicted this. <laughs> <laughs> but to, uh, being honest with you, uh, what, what the only thing that really can explain that, I mean, from a grounded scientific perspective, was that the people were in sync with each other because they were synchronizing to something, to a field that they were all exposed to. Mm -hmm. Something that's statewide, the magnetic field lines we were just talking about earlier. So we looked at that and, and it's, a, uh, in fact, I'll show this at the event as a review, uh, the graph of it. it. It's an amazing overlay when you look at the power of the resonant frequencies. It's an exact, almost an exact layover to the rhythms of the group of people. So, aha, right, we're, we're in sync with each other because we're in sync with the rhythms in the earth, the resonant frequency. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that it was a relatively small group. And California, I mean, we're all pretty wacky out here, right? You know, I mean, so, uh, <laughs> anyway, we were fortunate enough to find a funder who funded a much larger version of that study. Uh, so we called that the International HRV Synchronization Study. Now, now that we had groups of 20 people in each in five different countries. So well over 100 people uh, who did it, who repeated this experiment. Now we did something that once we knew that, you know, that really see it, is this happening globally, right? And uh, I won't go, there's a lot of details. A number of papers are coming out of this. But the one that, again, a big surprise happened. When we, this time, we organized it so that in the middle of the, the period, of the monitoring period, we had we organized a time for all the participants and all the groups around the world to come together, kind of like we're going to be doing uh, in at the event, right? To do a heart lock-in for 15 minutes, right? So wherever you were in the world, they, the the guy that we actually back then it was Skype, but it had a it had everybody connect in the groups and uh, led a meditation. We basically sent got into the heart focus, used the you know heart focus breathing, got coherent, but then sent love and appreciation to each other within all the groups that was the, the exercise for 15 minutes the results well a lot of level results i mean the people within the groups were more literally in sync with each other in each, each of the groups and that was true across all of them but the amazing thing was we were able we analyzed how in sync each person was with the rhythms of the earth 
over each day, over the 24 period, uh, 24 hours of each day through the study, right? And then looked at the group level of that. And on that day of the, the heart lock-in, the, when you look at the data, there's a big bar sticks up way above all the others that shows the degree of synchronization. So that, that's a long-winded way of saying just being in the heart coherent state for 15 minutes significantly increased our synchronization within ourselves and we're more coherent with others in the room. But there was a carryover effect that increased our synchronization with the earth for the next 24 hours. Mm. Yes. Right. So you might say, well, so what? But well, I kind of already hinted that there's more and more studies are now showing the I mean, not to, that's not just intuitively important to be in sync, but why it's actually important to be in sync with the rhythms of the earth. It's good for us. Mm. And more energy. Um, a lot of things we could talk about. I mean, I'll probably go into some of that at the event. Some of those, some of the newer research on, around that. Yeah. So I, that's a long, long answer, but I hope.